Hi, and welcome back to another Bob Blast. I'm Bob Burridge, and in my previous Bob Blast, I showed you the effectiveness of choosing from somebody's color wheel a color combination that would somewhat guarantee the effectiveness of using very certain color combinations. How to increase your chance of it becoming a good painting. Let me show you. So, whosever color wheel you do use, make sure you choose the colors that are suggested. You know, I'm using mine on this particular one, the one that I did last week, okay? And the dominant color was blue, remember? Blue. And here they are. There's the dominant color, blue. Red was the focal point color. Yellow and violet, yellow and violet, were the two spice colors. But this time, notice I put some family combinations together. So there's a dark blue, light blue. And in the red area, I put some magenta and the opera, the hot pink opera. My yellow, I gave two more colors. And yellow over here and that marigold over here. And here's my violet that I used last week. And now I've used uh, this kind of a beautiful magenta purple. And here's a really nice dark purple. So now I have choices. Plus I used white paint here and also black. Don't forget those too. And now let me go back to the painting that I started last week. You know, many of you said, what great demo, but how do you finish the darn thing? So here we go. I'm going to attempt to finish the one that we started last week. So last week we started this painting very loosely, starting with my dominant color. Here was my dominant color. I put it here on the table and I rubbed it all over the entire painting, the dominant color. Then the color wheel told me, go to the focal point color, red. Here was my red, put a little red in there, bam, your eye goes right to it. Now the other two colors were my spice colors. This in case, uh, yellow over here, a violet. We put a little bit of yellow in there, bam, 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 around the focal point color, and a little bit of violet, there it is in here, ran some down into here a little bit, and it was done at that point. And so it was going to be a landscape with a barn in it, and but I always start off loosely. So, so many of you asked me to, I'll finish the thar darn thing, and so now I'm gonna finish the darn thing. Let's try it. So my intention here is to turn this abstract into a landscape and with a barn in it, we'll see how it goes. Wish me luck, here we go. Turning it into a painting. All right, focal points here, ready to go. I'm gonna make sure that the focal point's even more of a focal point. Add some hot pink in here. Notice I've added other colors in here too. And while I have that color in my brush, I'm just gonna put it somewhere else just because I can. That's fun. I'm going to pick up some, uh, let's see, some more blue here. Add some white to this. There we go. There we go. Adding some white to the violet, a little bit of purple in there. This is called negative shape painting. I like to do this negative shape painting because you can come back in and get rid of some of that. There we go. And add more white. I'm working around the focal point here a lot. Looks like some clouds. That's what I'm gonna do, clouds. Go back in here with some more blue. We'll put some trees in here. There we go, trees. <laughs> Notice I'm painting all over the entire place all at the same time. This is called painting, painting. Keeping uh, a mind's eye on the focal point the whole time, even though I'm running, running paint all over the place. There we go always all over the place but make sure everything i'm doing supports the viewer's eye going right here to the focal point and a little bit more white in here there we go whoa more contrast it's still pretty abstract of course it is and uh, don't I, I particularly don't like to give the viewer all the pieces of information let them use some of their imagination god knows i'm Working on mine right about here. <laughs> Dramatic clouds right behind here. I'm gonna bring that color down into, in here a little bit. Have some more yellow. I don't know if any of this stuff makes sense, but it sure is fun to paint this way. There we go. Have those colors everywhere. There we go, add some more white in here. It's like a little pond. Uh-oh, he's starting to use his fingers again. Here we go. 
just having way too much fun now. There we go. Keep the eye there. I'm going to also make sure the front hair here is really dark. If I make it dark, then the eye's going to go right up to that little spot up in here. If I put anything down here, your eye's going to go down here. Like if I did that, see, your eye goes right down here. So if I do put that color somewhere else, I make sure I tone it down. There we go. Keeping it loose, keeping it abstract. I like to believe that the, the brush has two front ends. So I like to get in here and some lines. You can see I like to draw back into it also while, it, while it's still wet. Show the viewer how much fun it is to be a painter, not how boring it is. Hands in here too. There we go. Make it even more dramatic. Darker. Even darker. I put more contrast up here around the focal point since I have it on my brush. Brush. There we go. Cool. Now I'm gonna get a paper towel, put some stronger clouds up in here. Big cumulus clouds. I do that with my happy little napkin here. There we go. Really dramatic. And that's it at this point. And uh, I'll let this dry for a little bit and put it up on the wall. Make sure after I put it up the wall, I look at it for a long time. All right. So here's the finished painting. And a good way of making sure that it's finished, put a discarded mat around it or get it up on the wall and look at it. As soon as you put that mat on it, bam, it'll tell you it's finished. So thanks again for watching and thanks again also for your comments. I always love to hear those comments. I'll see you on the next one.